What is going on everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, here to start off the position outlooks for the 2019 season for the Salt Lake Stallions. I always want to say Salt Lake City Stallions, but on their roster and everything, it's just Salt Lake Stallions, but I feel like Salt Lake City flows better. What do you guys think? Leave your comments down below. But today we're going to be previewing the most important position on the field, and that is the quarterback position the stallions have four quarterbacks on its roster and they don't have an official or unofficial uh depth chart out just yet training camp i believe starts on the fourth for the aaf and today we're going to preview all four quarterbacks on the stallions roster so ladies and gentlemen i am tree from tree talks and this is the salt lake city stallions qb positional outlook now the first quarterback we're going to be discussing is B.J. Daniels. Now y'all may have heard of B.J. Daniels. He was a 7th round draft pick by the 49ers in 2013. He also played for the Seattle Seahawks as a quarterback. He also converted to wide receiver in the 2015 season. Uh, B.J. Daniels also has a Super Bowl ring with the Seattle Seahawks after they defeated, uh, of course, the Denver Broncos in the 2000. In 12 season, um, he played his college ball at Southern Florida, where he is an icon. At um, he currently holds a lot of records. He's second all time in passing yards, um, <clears throat> second in Big East passing yards, which is UCF's uh, division. He also has the rushing and touchdown, uh, rushing and throwing touchdown records with 55 and 25 respectively the kid was a mobile quarterback coming out of southern florida makes a lot of plays with his legs um extends plays as well uh he does all of that with his legs you know a mobile quarterback uh in bj daniels obviously is converted to the wide receiver position so speed is a big part of uh mr daniels's game now we're gonna be going over their strengths and weaknesses for Daniels his strengths are pocket awareness when he feels the pressure he is really good at moving up in the pocket or tucking it and deciding to run he is very good at decision making um, in critical parts of the game so if it's like a third and ten and he sees an alley to run he's gonna run for it and that is a good decision to be made also if he sees like an edge rusher moving up in the pocket he's gonna be able to move up as well really use his legs to benefit his game so you know that is a big part of his strengths, um, his pocket awareness, and also already mentioned his running ability. Um, broke a lot of rushing records for UCF at the quarterback position. Also broke the rushing touchdown record um, at U at USF, and he um, he no running back has it. He actually has the most rushing touchdowns in a career with 25. So. That is also pretty remarkable, but now we're going to get down to the weaknesses. And now, as I discuss these four quarterbacks, I want you guys to remember that these are not NFL caliber quarterbacks, so the weaknesses are really going to outweigh the strengths, at least early on, before these guys you know, really see the field and see how well they match up with the uh, talent that is on that is in the league so you know you don't know how well these guys are going to match up against guys that are basically kind of at the same level as they are but you know you're kind of looking at it objectively like you're scouting for an nfl team and that's kind of what i did you know there's there's a lot of glaring weaknesses in these guys games which is obviously why they didn't end up working out in the nfl um his weaknesses one of them is arm strength you look at any of his highlights or any of his games you know he's not really taking shots down the field he's taking the check down taking the easy throw um and when he does throw it deep and it gets there you know it's still a little underthrown. the receiver kind of has to go back to it and make the catch and you know he doesn't overshoot guys he's more of an undershoot uh type of a deep thrower so you know I think arm strength is really a big thing that B.J. Daniels, at least from what the last time he's played football, uh, really needs to improve on, as well as decision making. He's really good at decision making as far as knowing when to run and when to pass, but when he throws the ball, um, you know, he needs to make sure he's throwing it to the open guy. You know, and there's a lot of that. He threw double-digit picks, and every year he was in uh, where he was at USF, at Southern Florida, he threw double-digit picks every single year. And, you know, that's something that you would like to see decrease as you get older. But, unfortunately for Daniels, that was never the case. Um, Daniels really enters this season uh, for the Stallions, looking like he's going to end up being the starting quarterback. He has 
uh, some NFL experience. Some of these other guys do as well. But it seems like he has a little bit of a hair more um, starting. I mean, not starting, but, you know, NFL experience. And I think that, you know, the light has been shined bright on B.J. Daniels. I would expect him to be the quarterback for the Stallions. But let's not discredit these three other dudes. Next up, we're going to be talking about Austin Allen, the man with two first names. He was the starting quarterback for Arkansas in the 2016-2017 season. He actually took over for his uh, brother at the starting quarterback position for Arkansas. Um, <clears throat> his first season as a full starter and his only season as a full starter, he went 7-5. and five, And that's not really a terrific record to go in college, but it makes you bowl eligible. He went out to an impressive 24-3 lead in his bowl game. Unfortunately, he blew that lead against Virginia and ended up losing the game. So, you know, already automatically, clutchness is really questioned uh, in this kid's character. Now, as far as stats go, um, his best season, his best statistical season, he threw 3,400 yards, which is really good at the college level. He threw 25 touchdowns opposed to 15 interceptions. Um, 15 interceptions is a lot, but maybe from your first start as a young kid, you know, maybe you can be able to forgive that just a little bit. But, you know, 25 and 15, not great numbers. Like I said, these guys aren't NFL caliber players, so when you see these numbers, you kind of got to take them with a grain of salt. You know, if you get a guy that ends up throwing more touchdowns than picks, that's basically considered a win. So, being able to go 25 and 15 with 3,400 yards, 3,400 yards is a good number uh, to have. He went to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as an undrafted free agent. He was actually originally on the Memphis Express, um, which is another AAF team, but he ended up getting cut by that team and the Stallions picked him up. Now going over his strength, he has very good pocket awareness. You can also see that um, in BJ Daniels game as well. Um, he moves up in the pocket very well. He's really good at a uh, you know, zinging the ball out quick. He has a quick release. Um, his pocket awareness is truly one of the things that um, really stand out in Austin, in Austin's game. You know, looking at him, uh, looking at highlights. You know, it's hard to find tape of these guys, so you know you really rely on highlights and things like that. Quick release, and um, being able to get the ball out quickly. Now, he also is very good in the um, play action game. He's really good in the play action game. You know, a lot of his highlights came from the play action. So. Hopefully, if, you know, we haven't previewed the running backs just yet, but hopefully the Stallions have a solid running back. So this play, and uh, if Allen is called on to be the starter, so the play action game can really come full circle because that's something that he did exceptionally well during his time in Arkansas was the uh, play action game. And his also, he's really good at uh, his touch and decision making. Uh, his touch deep down the field as well as, uh, you know, mid game, his touch is very good. And, you know, is play uh, decision making, excuse me, I should say, is also very good. You know, he doesn't take risk, he doesn't take unnecessary throws that he doesn't need to make uh, in the game, which is good to see as a quarterback, you know, being able to make that decision that, oh, this is going to cause a turnover, so I better not throw it. Um, that's one thing that really stood out for me as far as his strength goes. As far as his weakness, his throwing motion. It's not, his throwing motion's weird. He has a quick release, but his throwing motion is just really weird. Like, I mean, you look at me, I'm a Jags fan. You look at Blake Bortles' throwing motion, it's kind of similar to Blake Bortles' throwing motion. So, you know, that's something he's going to have to fix. Maybe you can go to Tom Cable's California camp with Blake Bortles to improve that um, part of his game. But, you know, that's something that he really needs to improve on, his throwing motion, so he doesn't get rid of it so low. He gets rid of it so, he doesn't cock back to his ear like that. You know, he brings it down. So, you know, you can't, you can't be bringing it down. You have to keep it even, keep it down the line like I know anything about playing the quarterback position. But, you know, that's that's one thing I noticed. And he's more of a game manager than a guy that is going to win you the game. That's going back to talking about how in that bowl game he was up 24-3 to and he didn't win you the game. You know, the clutchness was in question. He ended up blowing that lead, losing the game to Virginia. And he looks like a true game manager. You know, if, if this team has a really solid running back, maybe he'd be good in the system. But as far as a guy that really can go out there and win you a game, I don't think Austin Allen is it. The next quarterback we're going to be talking about is Josh Woodrum. Josh Woodrum played his college ball at Liberty. He was an undrafted free agent signing by the New York Giants initially. He was a four-year starter at Liberty. He led them to three straight conference championship games as well as one appearance in the FCS 
uh, playoff game. He got waived by a lot of teams before being able to get his real uh, first opportunity to play in an NFL game. It was the preseason, but he went out and he impressed. He did very well. He went 25 for 36, 300 plus yards, and four touchdowns. Now, as far as his college career, with his career high, his career high in yardage came in his junior year where he tossed 2,924 yards. He also tied his career high um, in touchdowns his freshman and junior year. And those and the amount of touchdowns was 19. And he only had one year with uh, double-digit interceptions, which is a really good stat to see, especially in this league. When you looked at the quarterbacks that were on here, almost all of them uh, had four years of double-digit um, interceptions. <sighs> long pause there. Long, heavy breath for me. Strength for Woodrum's game. He has a quick release in his mid and short game are really good. Um... He's smart, you know, he looks like a kid that has a really good head on his shoulders, like as far as decision making goes and things like that. Like I said, he had one year where he had a single digit amount of interceptions, which it was only four his senior year. So obviously his decision making is pretty good. Like you looked at, uh, I looked at some of his preseason tape that he had, uh, especially against the Dolphins and the uh, Ravens of last year. Um, the guy really makes smart decisions, you know, and he's really accurate in the short game and the mid game. Honestly, Josh Woodrum, in my opinion, would be the front runner to start uh, at the quarterback position for the Salt Lake Stallions. I think that as far as a pure passer goes, he's the best pure passer out of any four of these options. Um, he doesn't necessarily have the mobility uh, that Daniels brings, but he is really good at escape ability. So, you know, it's kind of like a Baker Mayfield type of player where he's not necessarily known as a runner, but if push came to shove and he needed to get out of the pocket, uh, either make a throw on the run or be able to, you know, skirt and get a first down, um, that's part of Josh Woodrum's game. And I'm really excited to see what he can do. I think, honestly, he's going to end up being the starting quarterback uh, for this team. I think it's going to be a battle between himself and and BJ Daniels but before we get really high on Josh Woodrum let's go over some of his weaknesses his long accuracy uh it's not very good his arm strength isn't too bad from what I've seen um in his deep game it's a little questionable it's all right but it's more about the accuracy you know most of his deep balls are either underthrown or overthrown you know he can't really get them on the line right to the target and like I said his escapability is really good but it takes him a lot of time uh, in order to survey the pocket. So, you know, if this team doesn't really have a stellar offensive line, he's not going to have the time that he needs to go through his progression in order to be a successful quarterback. But like I said, from, you know, pure mechanics and pure, um, from what I've seen from them in their prior works in football, I think that Woodrum is the best option for the Salt Lake Stallions at the quarterback position. And the fourth and final quarterback on this roster, a guy that I'm really happy to talk about, we're going to be talking about Matt Linehan. Matt Linehan played for Idaho, and Idaho, of course, is the college just 30 minutes away from where your boy is from. The coach is also a former Idaho guy, as well as um, University of Miami guy, Dennis Erickson, which is crazy that he can even coach because he's so old. Like, I don't, that might not be good for your heart, you know, to coach at that old of an age but nonetheless that's the guy that they went with and Matt Lanahan being a former Idaho guy they might have that um, connection his junior year he threw a career high of 3,100 yards along with 19 touchdowns one thing that I would like to say about Lanahan I've seen him play in person a couple of times his arm strength is undoubtable um, he can throw that ball 80 70 yards and really huck the damn thing he has the strongest arm out of any four of these quarterbacks um, currently on the roster, but that alone definitely will not get him the starting job. He also has a lot of poise in the pocket as well, but his weakness is just his toughness. He got hurt a lot. He was, you know, injured a lot. You know, he took little nagging injuries that really seemed to affect his play um, in, during the season, as well as turnovers. Every year he played for Idaho, he had at least double-digit uh, interceptions. In fact, one year he threw more interceptions than touchdowns. Um, I'm expecting Lenahan to be one of the cuts early on in the season. I don't know right now what the official roster size is going to be for the AAF, but um, I wouldn't imagine them keeping all four, quarter, four of these quarterbacks. I'd imagine them maybe keeping two, maybe three, but I think Lenahan is going to be an easy cut uh, for the Stallions. It's unfortunate because, you know, I've seen him play and, you know, he's an Idaho guy, but unfortunately he might just not be good enough to make this final roster. 
And that was the Salt Lake Stallions quarterback positional outlook. What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to check the links down below as well. Don't forget to like me on Facebook, at Trevon Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Trevon Pixley. And follow me on Instagram, at Trevon Pixley. Also, if you're feeling oh so generous, you can go ahead and donate on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Trevon Talks. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Them's are just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and as always, you guys have a great day.